Okay, guys. Every house has its room that you don't show people. And this is it. And now the hood set up here. Got bicycles and stuff. It's turned into the stuff room. This is what happens when you don't have a basement. But on the other hand, still gotta keep it clean. No, no work happens here. It just turned into an area where you, you put stuff in the basement. So what do we have here? For anybody that's following me, this is Junior's Hood. A recap of what we've done to the hood and what we're about to do to the hood. Okay, recap. Junior's got a Concord. There's a Gremlin hood. Gremlin has a raised area around the front. Sticks up an inch and a half. Pretty cool. Concord just has a flat hood that comes around. Okay, so what did we do? Well, we put hood pins on the car. Then we didn't like the hood pins. I thought they were silly. Okay, so we re-welded them both sides. Filled them smooth and done. So that, that's been taken care of. Okay. We reshaped all this. Okay, the back side of the hood, the underpinnings or the uh, bottom side of the hood is the same for all the years, but the front isn't. There was a notch cut out, but it wasn't big enough for 78. Pretty weird how they went halfway. Okay, so we came back here. We made this bigger. It actually matches the back side of the hood. So when you look at it on the back side, it doesn't even look altered. Then for some reason, there was a point that stuck down here. Well, it's not a some reason. On the 78 Gremlin, 77, 78, they don't have headlight doors or headlight surrounds. So this is actually part of what you see. So they continue the body to meet the rest. Okay, so we remove that, put in a little piece of metal. Okay, also the front half of the hood was out further than this part of the hood. The way this is kind of sunken, it's hard to make out in the video, but they go flush now. Before this stayed a little proud. So if you remember, we sliced it, sliced it, totally reshaped the hood, welded it back together, ground it, and then I just did some final smoothing out with some for five less than Bondo. Same on this side, obviously. Um, as you can see how far it tapes down, but it's thin. Okay, 78, or 77, 78 Gremlin doesn't have, not have the chrome on the front. And the chrome actually covers this. It comes up, it's about here. And then continues up here, then completes around the headlight door. And then the bottom of the grill. So we fitted that to the car. This hood was completely fitted to the car. The fenders are set up for this hood. All hoods should be the same, but the fenders are set up for the hood. This hood, this hood was bolted on the car when final fitment of the nose went on. Okay. We got the super stock scoop, which has been cut to match the actual radius crown of the hood okay so now this it's just laying on here so when you bolt this thing down this has a perfect shape to match the hood it doesn't belly out doesn't do anything then we did a quarter round on the outside edge of it when we were done just like everywhere else would have okay so this became a bolt-on scoop instead of a mold on okay you remove that it's not bolted on and we have a hole that's covered with plastic. Well, we have a hole here. It's kind of like arrowhead shape because that's the shape of the um, bracing inside. We followed the bracing. Then when you came back here, we had to put a, a little half circle in. If you remember, we made metal to continue the bracing. Okay, and fitted it all nice. It's all finished underneath. This hood is prepped and done. The hood is ready to go. Hood's been blocked a couple of times. It's in final prime. Okay, blocked out good. If you remember, there was a little something in one of these edges here and there from someone strapping it to something. Junior had worked that all out and filled it. And remember, we blocked it. It looked mint. Okay, here's where the problem lies. Okay. Here's the back of the hood. Okay. Here's the hole. So you have, I don't know, 10 inches. This 10 inches is going to have to shrink down to about two inches. So the, the rough guess, you know, saying it's going to have to remove like six inches of this hood material because of the tunnel rim. Now, before 
He had the single carb, the velocity stack and air filter, and this cleared nice. And the top of the velocity stack had about a half an inch to the scoop. So when you looked in the front of the car, you saw the air cleaner in this hole. Okay. The air cleaner was roughly here. And here's the front hole. So then when you walk by, you could actually see it. That was the intent. Now, none of that's going to work. So there's all different ways to go. Initially, we said, why don't we just take the flat hood, cut whatever size holes required in it, and throw this hood to the side. Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, I put a lot, a lot, a lot of effort into this. I mean, there's live videos with head cams. Remember me cutting, grinding, doing all this? I put a lot of effort to make this fit. I could have just notched this and bolted the molding on. You would have seen a little gap in here. I didn't have to alter this. It probably wouldn't have been acceptable also, but I wanted it to be smooth right across. Um, I like the raised hood in the front. It's a ni very nice, it's hard to see the place, a very nice feature. There's a line coming down right here. I like it. I like it. And the red, for argument's sake, will only come to roughly here. So this whole piece will be white and then the blue. Okay, and then we carry it down to the valves. So I'm getting to the point now on the car where the weather's about to change, the humidity's about to drop. And I'm saying to myself, it's time to blow in the bottom of this hood white, because the bottom's just going pure white. Okay? And it's time to at least blow in color here. We don't let it blow in. And here, and then clear the hood. You know, we'll fade it into it so the clear stick attach will paint. Then put it on the car so it'll look like solid and into a fade job. Then when it's on the car, fit it back on, we could find the actual area on the towel where it meets. And whatever that, we'll just say, say it's six inches. Come down here, six inches, then mask the line. I can mask off everything I have to do and I could shoot the white and re-clear right on the car. Same's going to happen with the valance. I need this on the car to the valance. Same is going to happen with the hatch. The inside of the hatch is going to be white. Okay. You really don't see it when um, when the hatch is closed. Not that it matters. It's technically a white car. Um, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to blow the color and put it on the car. So the rest of the car will be assembled, cleared, and I can take my time to be wet sanding, putting the white down, and clearing it again just like we did pretty much with the roof but the roof we left unpainted in the beginning and i worked off that edge and that could become sketchy um i use hardener in my base coat so that's why the uh, base coat doesn't reactivate and wrinkle off but there's always that chance it could do it so i'd rather just clear it and be able to say okay this the hood can be touched with your fingers played with or whatever it is and then we can do the white at our leisure um, but here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to flip this hood. Obviously, I'm not doing any of the work in my house. It's going to be here because it's easier for me to just walk out to the garage and, uh, transfer measurements to this, which will be a totally different video on how you transfer measurements. In the beginning, I didn't understand it until I did my car. And, uh, someone enlightened me on it and I figured it out how to figure out where your tunnel ram or whatever it is is sticking through, how to transfer it to the hood. It's, it's actually very simple. Where it gets complicated is the fact that your hood doesn't lift straight up and down. Your hood actually cantilevers, as they call it. So it doesn't even hinge like a door. It hinges and moves back, which helps back here. Okay, but it makes this hole longer. So now the question is, is he has those nasty big velocity stacks on there. The hood, the hole would be really long and oval. I'm saying to him, well, do it with tape. I'll figure it out with tape. I'll lay it out a bunch of times. Obviously, this plastic will be gone. And I'm thinking to now follow this body line. It's hard to see. It goes all the way to the back of the car here. It gets it's very small here, and it's very proud here, obviously, and it's the proudest in the front. But I'm thinking of picking a number, whatever it might be, right masking that off and opening up the hood like some people open up a total hood 
and leave just the edges on there, like the three inches or whatever it is, and you see in there, and it's like, okay, the hood's gone. It would be nice to just leave the hood closed and just have an opening until you, you know, until you have to open it to do something. And people could look into the hole. I mean, I, I'd like that. I think that's cool. So I'm thinking about it. It's not something I would do with a flat hood, but since this is already giving me a foundation to do this, and everything we've done on the car is what's rolled out of my brain, um, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Um, like I said, I don't go out of my way to do things different. I just go out of my way to do things the way I like them, and they should be. I don't care what anybody else thinks. This is not to impress anybody. This is to show you what my process is, and if you agree with it, fine. If there's things you can get from it, fine. If there's things I did wrong, please let me know. Um, and not comments like you ruined the car. And those have gotten old. Um, so if that's what we're thinking about. The, the question is, it isn't what's gonna happen up here. This is easy. When the hood's closed, this is easy. Um, people have gotten used to fiberglass hoods pin on fiberglass hoods and stuff like that where they're not high quality. Now, I know people that make really high quality hoods. They copy the inner ribbing as its own piece. They do the outside and then they graft them together and you can swear it's a steel hood. But a lot of these hoods now, the fiberglass hoods say it has a cowl on it. There's no ribbing and the cowl is just part of the hood. And people have gotten used to seeing that rather than cut bracing. And usually when you cut the bracing, a lot of people will cap the end of the thing. Now the question is what's gonna, uh, what I'm gonna have to figure out is how much of the bracing do I wanna take out and how can I neaten it that it doesn't look atrocious to the eye? Because obviously if there's a hump in it and I'm gonna cut through it, I can't remove the hump, you know what I mean? So, and there is the major ribbing in the front is that's actually where I have this sitting on. You never, you never put horses on the tin. You never. Um, and I have another ribbing in the back. So the question is going to be is where do I even start to do that? Because it's not going to be a matter of just cutting this section out underneath and then just starting to do it. At least that's how I feel. But um, I've also seen people over the years, you know, people that put an effort into it, when they cut the hole in the hood, they take a thin strip, I don't know, three eighths of an inch, sometimes quarter inch, and they put it on here. Okay, and it doesn't necessarily stick up, but it sticks down. And it just gives it like the finished look. The problem with that is the ribbing is gonna be, I don't know, I don't have to check it, three quarters an inch. So to put that piece of metal all the way around, I think would look ridiculous. So that's not in the cards. But this is something I want to play around with. It's been rolling around in my head now for the last month. And I don't want to miss my window of opportunity to do this. I have some other things I'm doing at the same time. Um, but I have to do this. The running part isn't going to be an issue with Junior's car. That I could do anywhere the car is sitting. This. The actual firing up the paint guns again. Getting the compressors going again. All that stuff. There's only a small window of time I could do it. And um, at this point, if I do do something out in the garage, then we'll just say the fumes linger in the house. I have somewhere else to go. So, and I have nobody else here to worry about. I have no animals here anymore. Well, I never had animals here, but you know what I mean? No fish, no birds to breathe it in, no humans. So that's where we stand. We have not forgotten about this car. There is more work done to this car. My computer, the battery exploded on literally. Um, that's a sight. So I have no computer. If you see this, I figured out how to do it through my phone. If you don't see this, I guess what's the sense of saying it? But um, yeah, it's a shame we had to stop with this at this point, but I had no choice. We wanted a gun and some things were more important than others. So, and with that, if I didn't stop, I would have a perfectly painted mint hood and not be able to use it. So once you go to cut that hole, I mean, I cut the hole in my black car. It did not damage the paint, amazingly, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure how I'm cutting it yet. 
to say that. So, okay, guys. Just figured I'd get you guys up to date. And if you don't remember, we have an NOS hood trim. We have three NOS headlight doors. I have two left sides, one right. NOS grill, NOS emblem. Um, and that completes the front of the car. Because I don't think the car's getting a bumper in the front. So, okay. And uh, that's it, guys. Well, talk to you later.